Hi everyone, my name is Ryan Booz. I'm a developer advocate here at Timescale. And for Timescale Tuesday today, I want to show you how you can use the informational views and functions we provide for hyper tables and chunks to query a, a number of things that might be useful to your situation. Specifically, I'm going to show you how you can query the various uh, views and functions together to get details about the size of your hyper tables and chunks as you start to use more and more of the features within Timescale. Hopefully you can take that and then extrapolate it to maybe uh, other situations where it would be helpful to you. Maybe you want to keep track of the start and end time of your chunks and the total number of data with it, within each chunk, some kind of ratio. Uh, maybe as your data and your application grows, you might need to adjust that chunk time later in the future. So there's lots of ways you can use the information we're going to show you here to help you in your situation. So what I want to show you is uh, really what changed and why. So this information is, this is the documentation for Timescale DB 1.7. We changed a lot in Timescale DB 2.0, which is what I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm at the docs. In case you don't know, you can actually click this drop down and you'll see a list of all the previous versions. So in Timescale DB uh, before 2.0, so 1.7 and before, uh, we ha we've had these informational views for quite some time. And it really was just general information. So I'm looking at the, uh, the view about hyper tables, right? So this is per hyper table, and it would show you the name of the table and some basic size information. There actually was no view for uh, chunks. If you look over here in this uh, left hand, this right hand menu, there's nothing over here about chunks except just one about compressed chunks. All right, so we didn't have, uh, there was just information that honestly was kind of hard to get. You really had to go searching a little bit. One good example is knowing the beginning and ending time of each chunk within a hyper table. Uh, you know, sometimes maybe you need to do a manual compression for some reason. That happened to be a use case that I had. I couldn't rely on a policy because of what I was doing. And so I needed to look at the uh, range start and end to make sure it was far enough in the, in the past that I wouldn't be inserting new data into it. So finding that information is much easier in Timescale DB2. So as I flip over to Timescale DB, this is actually the latest version, 2.1. That same view, uh, two things you'll notice. One, it's been named to hyper tables, right? So it's plural. And it actually gives you uh, just the hyper table information, no size information here. But it adds detail. And hopefully this gives you an idea of why we made all these changes. A lot of the information down here is about distributed hypertables, all right? So we don't have two different views, one for regular hypertables and one for distributed hypertables. We just added additional information in here. And so uh, this is great. It allows you to get a much better understanding of what's happening, but you don't have size. And so what we did is we provided uh, additional functions that you can use with these views uh, to go ahead and find the size. You'll also notice that we actually have a view for chunks now. And this is, is so much easier than what we had before. For instance, we have a really simple two fields to show you the range start and the range end. So using what I'm about to show you, I think you can find a lot of use for DevOps kind of situations uh, and just having a better understanding of what's happening inside of your database. So to go find that um, the size information, we have a couple of uh, functions for hyper tables around size, and then we have a couple of functions for uh, chunks around size, and that's what we're going to show you in the SQL. Now, what we're going to do, I'm using this database on Timescale Forge. I've used it for a number of benchmarking examples. You'll notice that this is our new Explorer tab within uh, Timescale Forge, new feature that's really exciting, a lot we're going to do with this. And it shows you a number of things generally about this database. One is that I have compression enabled and what my compressed ratio is. And I noticed something here that I can't quite figure out yet. Uh, we just haven't exposed it. I can see that this table, I just know this database. I know that most of the data in this database is for this one table because I've been benchmarking on it. So the table itself is 670 gigabytes, a little bit more than that in size. Of that size, 258 gigabytes is compressed. So there's some portion of this table that's not compressed, but we don't display it here. And it's not super uh, easy to get to in the views without knowing how to query them together. So what I'm going to work through briefly is showing you the views and functions. And we're going to get to the point where we can say, here's the total size of this table, the total number of the total size of compressed chunks, and the total size of uncompressed chunks. 
absolutely, I could just take these two numbers and uh, subtract them and get it. That's ultimately what we're gonna do, but do it through the views so you can see how to use the various bits of information. Um, the last thing I'll show you as we go over to look at the data is uh, how you join these together. So hopefully it becomes clear as you start to see it. I'm gonna quickly work through these. This is the hyper table uh, view. I'm just limiting it to the first one and I'll go into record mode so you can see a little bit better. When you need to cross join these, um, now hyper tables is a little bit different. Uh, you don't often need to get the, um, the, the two views together, but the hyper table, uh, the name and the schema is really the place to join. And I'll show you that down below so that you can get the right information between taking the names out of the view and getting it in the hyper table. So we get what we saw in the documentation. We can see that this is a single node instance. This is not a multi-node database. So is distributed is false. Uh, it is compressed. So this hyper table does have compression enabled. And we see that we have 759 chunks so far. Now, if I uh, take that table, this is the CPU table, and I query for the uh, total bytes, you'll notice that I don't have anything to like join on here to say, well, I know I had uh, a table out of the view and, and how do I get the information here? How do I join between these if I need other information? And this is where uh, a lateral join really helps. So I can query the view to get a list of hyper tables and then feed that if I wanted to say, get this information for all of my hyper tables across the database. So you'll see that's the total and then I can go to the actual compressed uh, total. So this is for the data that is in that table uh, that is compressed. This is how much space it was before it was compressed and this is how much it was after. And you can see of this, I have uh, 671 chunks that are currently compressed out of that 759. So a lot of good information here, uh, it's really straightforward to get. And then you'll see, I get the exact same stuff with the chunk view. So now this is the information chunk view. And I said earlier for my use case, uh, er, when I was doing this uh, for a, uh, another demo, I had to keep track of the range start and range end. It's really clear and easy to get to now. And so that's something I had to, to think about there. Now you notice that uh, something that's a little bit different with chunks is that we have the actual fully qualified schema that we return here. And you'll notice in the two functions that happen next, we're gonna return those as well. So we can join those together to make sure we're getting the right information about each chunk, right? We have a table, but then the table is made up of many things. And if we wanna get specific information about each chunk, we need to be able to join that up. So let's go ahead and look at what those two functions look like. So now I'm gonna say, hey, the detailed chunk information about this CPU table. And I get it and it looks very similar to the table information, but now I do get that fully qualified name so I can use it later. Now that is just the chunk total size. It has nothing to do with the compressed size. But now if I look at the compressed information, this is for one chunk. Um, both of them, I, I have a limit one, so I'm only getting one row back. This is for this chunk, how much it was uh, before it was compressed and how big it is after it was compressed. So we're gonna take all of these things together and see if we can answer the question of how do I get the total size of the table, the total compressed information in that table and the total uncompressed size of the information in that table. So the first thing I wanna show you is that there are, uh, one of the big changes going from timescale DB one uh, to two is that the view does actually have a column called is compressed. Uh, we had a flavor of that to begin with, and on a single node hyper table, so this is a, a hyper table that is not distributed, I can get a count of total co uh, compressed chunks. Now, you already saw I can get that out of some of the views as well. I wanted to show you this, and I'll get out of record mode. I'm grouping on is compressed, so I can see that, again, 88 are not compressed, 671 are compressed. Now, the reason that trips tripped me up in a demo a few weeks ago is I forgot that with distributed hyper tables, uh, and this is in the documentation, that column does not get filled in. And so if this was your query uh, and you run this on a hyper table, you'll see that um, we don't get anything back. And I'm gonna show you that in a second. Instead, what I am doing here now is I updated that query to be able to use on both regular hyper tables and distributed hyper tables. I did that by joining the view that I'm, um, com that I'm getting the information out of and the uh, function. And so the view allows me to say, you know, I needed, this is a little bit smaller than what I was showing there. 
I actually needed the range start. That comes out of the view, but I needed to know whether or not the chunk was compressed even in a distributed hypertable, which comes out of the function. And so I get information from both of them and I join them based on that fully qualified schema, the schema name, the chunk name and the chunk schema. And then uh, on a non-distributed hypertable, I can use either of these columns, all right? So if I do this, I'm going to get one chunk back. That's what I needed this query to do is give me an uncompressed chunk based on a range uh, that I could then go ahead and compress. And like I said, this is a non-distributed hypertable, so I can use either of those columns. I get the same value back. Well, that's great. The problem is I learned, I relearned, because I'd forgot that if I try it, this is actually a multi-node database now. It's the same table. It's just distributed across four data nodes. If I take that same simple query and I try and a group by this value of is compressed, you'll see that uh, it takes a second to connect here. It just gives me all of the chunks and nothing is separated. And that's because we don't fill that in in a distributed hyper table. There's a lot of reasons for that, but the biggest one, it's really twofold. We don't wanna take the time in a view to go query all the nodes uh, because we want views to be really fast. And uh, we also, technically you can still go change a compressed status on a data node individually and the access node wouldn't know about that. So we want you to use the view, be really intentional about calling that view uh, so that you can get the information back. We will then push that down to the data node and get you the right information back. So this is that same query that I showed you on a single node. And again, I'm using the view column is compressed and you'll see that I get nothing back. I'm not getting a chunk back that is uncompressed for, for this function I was using it for. However, on a uh, distributed hyper table, if I then say, show me a, a compressed status of uncompressed, I now get a distributed hyper table chunk back that I can feed to another uh, query to go ahead and compress. So uh, in this specific case, if you're dealing with compression and you wanna know whether or not chunks are compressed or not, you really should stick with the function and the column of compression status Whatever else you join together, that's going to be your, your moment, of your, your, your truth about each specific function. So let me go back to that single node to finish this up, just to give you an idea of some other things you can do. So this is uh, that big you know, three terabyte hyper table I showed you earlier. Uh, I'm just going to get the total value out of the hyper table compression stats. So I expect this number to match what we saw in the UI. It was about 258 gigabytes. I'm also using uh, a, a Postgres function called PG size pretty. It takes the bytes and makes it into something readable uh, that's a little bit more understandable. So I'm gonna get the total before compression and total after compression. And there we go. We got 258 gigabytes. That's what I expected to see based on the UI. Uh, there's our three terabytes or 2.9 terabytes of data compressed down to 258. Now I can do the exact same thing. Oh, I, that's right, I wanted to show you this. Well, what happens if I don't know, or I want to go, you'll notice here, I, I specifically reference the CPU table. What if I don't know all the hyper tables in my database, or I just want to get all of the hyper tables? Well, again, this is specifically the compression stats for the hyper table. There's another one called detail size, uh, detailed stats, but I could feed that into a lateral join. So a lateral join in Postgres allows me to query one table, and then iterate the query inside of the lateral join, um, over and over again based on some fields in the outer query. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm querying the view that gets me a list of all my hyper tables, all right? And I'm going to ask for the hyper table name with inside of the compression stats function in that inner query. So what this will do is list every hyper table and if there's compression enabled, how much data is, uh, was it before it was compressed and how big is it after it was compressed? Now you will notice I actually have to specify reg, uh, reg class here and that's just a typecast that's necessary for this function. What you get out of the outer query is really a string but we need to tell it this is actually the uh, OID class inside of Postgres. So if I run this, I turned on compression for a second table but you'll notice that no chunks are yet compressed and so that's why this row ends up empty right now. But compression is enabled and it knows that, and so it returned that data to me. So if you did something like this, you would get a row for every hyper table that has compression enabled. 
If I were to change this function to uh, detailed size, I could get information about just the size of each hyper table. So now let's do the same thing with uh, chunks. I should expect if I were to sum up all of the details about compressed chunks, I get the same 258 gigabytes. Let's see what happens. And sure enough, I do. I get the exact same information. But I did this to show you one thing, particularly when it comes to these compressed stats functions. If I were to filter based on uncompressed, I don't get any data back, all right? Uh, because even though there is a record returned, we don't actually uh, insert, there is no data about the compression nature of, of the table or the chunk until it's actually compressed. And so uh, just recognize that, again, this is one of those problems. I can tell how much is compressed I can tell the total size of my table, but to get the value of the data that's not compressed, we have to do some math. So let's go ahead and do that. So if I go down here, I'm going to create, this is the last query we'll look at. I'm joining uh, basically both functions, all right? So I have the detailed size, that's gonna get me the total size of all chunks, regardless of compression. And then I'm gonna get a list of the sizes for the compressed chunks. So because the only thing that the chunk compression stats function returns is data for chunks that have been compressed, I need both of these to get that total value. So uh, this is a CTE. That means that this inner query right here gets me the information, and then I'm going to reference it in an outer query to do some of the math that I want. Now, there's a number of ways you could do this. This was the easiest way for me to quickly put this together to show you. So this is what the inner query returns. It just gives me two values, the total size of the table and the total compressed size of the data in that table. I want to know the difference. And so I take that and I feed it again into my PG size pretty. I'm going to do a little bit of math, subtract the total from the compressed. That gets me the total amount of data in this table that is not yet compressed. And then the total compressed and the total size. Let's see what we get. And sure enough, if we would have done that simple math another way, we'd get the same answer. But now I can see by using these functions together, I can get the total uncompressed data of that table is 414 gigabytes. The total compressed is 258. We saw that in the UI, and that gives us our total size currently for this table uh, on disk of 672 gigabytes. Uh, I hope that was helpful to start to get your, your mind around how these functions and views work together. Um, I would just say, again, please um, think about Subscribing to this channel, I, I haven't actually asked you to do that yet. We're trying to be really intentional about uh, you know, creating videos every week, sometimes multiple times a week. We really are going to be diving in more to time scale, and honestly, we're going to try and do more about Postgres in general. So please subscribe to the channel so that you'll be notified uh, when new information, when new videos are posted. There's a lot going on right now at time scale, and there's going to be a lot of stuff for you to see. Uh, always come check out Docs. As I showed you, there's multiple ways to look at Docs. And then slack.timescale.com. That's our uh, community Slack channel. Lots of good stuff happening there. Uh, I say this every week. I'm just stunned at how often I see uh, community members helping community members. It's a great place. Please come visit us. And again, I hope this was helpful today to see some ways to get more information about your Timescale database.